everybody. I'm Nora Burrows. I have been participating in a mystery quilt along. I've never done a mystery quilt along before. I've been doing this mystery quilt along and I got to the point with it where I just decided I didn't like what I was doing. It's not that I didn't like the quilt along itself. I'm unsure about it, undecided. It's hard to know when uh, you can't see what the final product is going to be. But anyway, um, I've decided to kind of abandon the mystery quilt along, but I have all of these pieces made. I have 20 of these pieces here made and 20 of these pieces here made. And so now I need to figure out what to do, right? Because I don't want um, a UFO. I don't want to just, you know, give these blocks away. I don't, I think part of the problem with this quilt along was that I did not choose my fabrics wisely. So at this point, I feel like I need to have a little bit more control over um, where this project is gonna go to kind of save it. Like if I just kind of continue on with these fabrics and not know what's going on, it, it's gonna end up being a hot mess. So let me show you what I'm thinking. I don't really know what I'm gonna do at this point, but I do kind of have an idea of a next step. I am thinking of maybe these being two different quilts, and that could end up being anywhere from a baby quilt to a throw to a, a full bed size quilt. But I don't know, we're just gonna see where it goes. Let's take a look. As I mentioned, I have 25 of these blocks and 25 of these blocks. Let's take a look at these first. What I'm thinking is um, that if I lay these out, you know, in this star formation here, and then put another one. So this fabric here, this um, this one is a cafe print, which I think is super cool. If I put a square in the middle, then we have you know our little our literal star here. And this star takes four of these blocks. And since I have twenty of them, that means I could make uh, five of these units. So I think that's what I want to do. Um, but I need to figure out what to do in the corners. I did try um, a variety of things that I didn't love. Um, and what I'm ultimately thinking that I also don't totally love, here, let me show you. I was thinking, you know, you could do something just like that, which is cool. I mean, I don't, I don't hate that, um, but it's a lot of this purple. So ultimately, I think I want to break it up a little bit. And I have this kind of polka dot and heart print here, which I also am not totally crazy about, but I don't know. I'm just doing the best I can here. So if I put this, how did I do this? Like this maybe. Yes, this is what I was going to do. Um, I can kind of make this into a diamond. Let me show you. You know, I actually did experiment with a lot of different fabrics for this this diamond part, but this this is, I think, what is best because it kind of goes with the whiteness um, of the the interior pieces here. Again, I'm not sold on this. I'm I I just feel a little lost here. But I'm gonna go ahead, move forward, and sew these blocks up, uh, and then and then take a look at where I'm at. The way that I sewed this is I sewed from corner to corner, right on the diagonal, so that when I open this up, I'll have my piece here uh, that fits. But in addition, I also, sew I also sewed a half inch on the other side of the line, you can see here, so that when I cut in between these two, I'll have my piece here that goes in this spot, but then I'll also have an additional half square triangle that I can use somewhere else in the quilt. So I'm just gonna save, hold on to these and save them. I'll go ahead and, I've, I've sewn these, now I'll go ahead and cut them and put them in their spots. Here I have my half square triangle sewn, and this block is really composed of a nine patch. If you separate these, you can see that it's nine, nine equally sized pieces here. So what I'll do first is sew these two together, one fourth inch along this line, same with all of these right across here. I have my handy binding clips, so I'll clip this side so that I remember when I bring this over to the sewing machine which side I'm supposed to sew, and then I'll sew this top one to this one here, again, one fourth inch. This one will just hang out until I have these other pieces sewn. Next, I'll sew this unit to this unit one-fourth inch, and this lone square to the top, 
and this will just hang out for a minute. I now have three units, one, two, three. I'll sew this piece to this piece, right sides together, and then this unit to the body of the block and iron just like that. Here is the finished block. Uh, I'm still not sure exactly how I'm feeling about this, but I don't hate it, so that's a good sign. Now, I have five of these made, uh, and so I need to make some blocks to kind of go in between the other blocks. Uh, what I wanna do is use more of this fabric here, which is the same as this, and then add in this teal. So I've made, I started to make um, some of these checkerboard and I'll use them kind of in these other blocks. I'm not exactly sure ex exactly how, I have some ideas, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of these and come up with a plan. Here is kind of where we are at. You can see I've done the checkerboards. They'll go in each one of those four squares, but I still have to make more of them. Now I did not do my math correctly so that they are not, these are not all sewn together by the way, they're just kind of units are kind of laid on top of each other. But um, as you can see, some of them are thinner than others and that's because I didn't do my math correctly. Uh, and I think it'll be okay. It won't look, once it's sewn together, it won't look as drastic as that, but they're not gonna be perfect squares. However, there will be no two that are next to each other. Like there won't be any two purples touching, that kind of thing. So that's the important part. Uh, and then I just added in the middle of each one of these checkerboard blocks, a square of this fabric here. Get it upside down. Uh, this floral fabric, which is very similar to the fabric. It's the same line as the fabric that's used in these blocks in kind of these diamonds here. Um, so I think that's gonna be okay. Then if you remember, I had all of these leftover blocks from the cutaways of making these over here. Um, so I have enough to do a row around the, along the bottom and then another row around the top. I don't have enough to go all the way around the quilt, which I think is gonna be fine. As a little inner border, I'll have this stripe. Uh, this is a Tula pink stripe, and that will go all the way around the quilt. And then this deer fabric here, which I think is pretty amazing. This is another Tula pink as well, um, which I think the colors of the teal and the purple really go perfectly. So that will go all the way around the quilt. So what I need to do is make these four blocks, finish these four blocks, sew them together, and then add my borders. This whole middle section here is sewn together. It's one piece, and I'm trying to decide what to do about the borders going around that. I'd originally talked about doing these half square triangles along the top and the bottom, uh, but the more that I looked at it, the more that it added, it, it became a little bit messy in my opinion. Uh, this is a little bit cleaner here without kind of all that fussiness going around and then I was kind of looking over here um, at the difference between having an inner border and having no inner border just having the deer go right up against the uh, center quilt block. I think what I'm going to do is this over here so I'll do it around I'll do this um, pin stripe actually it's not a pin stripe just a regular stripe pink stripe around the entire piece, no half square triangle, I'll just get rid of that and I'll use it in another project. And then I'll do the deer going around that and I'll have to think about what I wanna do for a binding. Here's a closer look at those half square triangles and I do kind of go, keep going back and forth because they are pretty cool, um, but you can get a closer look there. The other thing I wanted to show you is that I did uh, make a mistake. As careful as I was in making sure that all of my hearts went up and down correctly. This block here um, actually got rotated as I put it into the quilt. So three of the hearts are now going sideways and one of the hearts is going up and down. If I had rotated it the correct way, I still would have had one set of hearts going horizontally, which is incorrect. So that's a little irritating because I did spend a lot of time trying to make sure that that was all correct. And it is the center block, of course. Um, but I think it's fine. It's it's not a big deal. I, in the grand scheme of things, you there's, those hearts are so teeny tiny, you can't even see them. And the quilt top is finished. I really love it. I think the design ended up to be really interesting. Um, just classic blocks, but put together nicely. And then the, the border of the deer is really beautiful with that tulip pink stripe along the inner border. Let's get a closer look at it. Using white-based fabrics, uh, like the heart fabrics, and then, um, you know, these florals here, this is kind of a bigger floral, and then 
the same line of a, of a tighter floral. Those, those are not typical for what I do. Um, I'm not really comfortable using whites for whatever reason. So this was kind of fun to do something outside of my comfort zone. The checkerboard here, as I mentioned, not all of them are perfect squares. And so you can see how they don't, the corners don't completely line up. Um, but when you back up, it's not really noticeable. I think it worked out just fine. The combination of the teal and the purple work really well together. And then I think for the binding, um, if we back up a little bit here, you can see where the binding will be. I'll use that teal to be a binding um, around the whole piece. So I think that that will, that will kind of tie it together nicely. So it'll be interesting to see how the mystery quilt along turns out. I have a friend who's doing it, the, the quilt along that were these blocks kind of to begin with that I abandoned. Um, so I'll get to see kind of hers and maybe I can show her, show you her quilt. Um, but this I think will certainly be different. And then I do have those 20 other blocks that were um, the same blocks as these ones here, but I had used uh, a different colorway. So I'll have to figure out what to do with those 12 blocks. I'd like to do something completely different with those. So that will be another video, but thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.